and we are live hello happy monday everyone happy monday uh it's seth and carly uh back together two weeks yeah. in a row my god Woo! i feel like we should have one of those signs that says no no accidents for uh x days no no guest hosts for two weeks yay um uh we're gonna check in with folks in the chat is that um do you hear that noise is that my i'm kind of hearing there that. is Something. construction going there's on construction here. going on lucky you Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I have no. That's okay. For Is it, it your house or just your neighborhood? It's my neighbor. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How long have you been putting up with that for? Yeah, I think it's just today. I think they're just doing. All something right. Today, if they means. just they just know that we have a podcast to record. I know. Right? That's I all right. Well, we are all going to pretend to ignore it and uh, start by saying hi to Vince Lamb. Uh, hap all right. We we need to establish something yes. right off the top. Uh, we are not participating in April Fool's Day. Uh, everything is, and we're going to say this again once we start recording. Everything we talk about today will be real. We are not into April Fools. Uh, so thank you, everyone, Vince uh, and Weiser, for wishing up to say April Fools' Day. Hello, Michael Bingham. Uh, hello to uh, Michael Bingham's mom. Also, happy birthday! No fooling. Oh, happy birthday! Um, yeah. Uh, you will get thank no you tricks all. from us, just treats. No tricks, just treats. Um, <laughs> that's Halloween weight. Yeah. Uh, hello to Bo Blossom and Michelangelo and Derek Ho's corner. Um, and Brian Sager. Uh, yes, uh, there's a uh, the uh, giant life-size Gundam statue at Yokohama Harbor, Japan, was uh, retired. Uh, darn, I will not get to see that in person, but it will live on in YouTube videos. Um, and I am not a wrestling fan since uh, since the Andre the Giant uh, oh. retired. So I would I would say, Long but time. anyone who was into WrestleMania, uh, happy fortieth, I guess. Um. Um. And uh, hello to um everyone else. And I think we've got enough people in the yeah. chat that we can kick off this show in three, two. Please lower your head and watch your step while boarding. Welcome to the Attractions Podcast. You are all clear for dispatch. Have fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Attractions Podcast, sponsored by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. I'm Seth. And I'm Carly. And we are here to talk to you about the latest and greatest in theme park news and more, as well as what's going on in our own lives. And Carly, great to see you again. How have yes. you been? So good. I uh, took a little bit of time to recover from the uh, jet lag I got from Italy. I always get jet lagged when going west. Just mm. my body. Oh, yeah. I know how it is. Two days, slept it off. And I spent the weekend in uh, Wilmington. So if you are a teen drama fan like me, <laughs> uh, One Tree Hill is my favorite show of all time. Uh, oh, a lot wow. of big shows, productions, movies filmed there. So we went there this this weekend, went to the beach. It was just kind of like a relaxing trip, non-theme parky, go with the flow, sleeping in. So it was very nice for a change of pace for me. <laughs> That sounds like a fantastic change of pace. I did something similar, you know, uh, the previous week I had family at the theme parks and uh, got lucky because the crowds weren't too bad right. the previous week, but they really picked up uh, this past week uh, uh, leading up to Easter. So I noped out of the theme parks this past week and instead uh, I took the Brightline train, uh, yet another endorsement. Yes. Right line uh, from Orlando down to South Florida to see family, uh, spend a few hours on the beach, um, have some good Jewish deli food. Uh, so it was a, a, a perfect little uh, trip and um, good to be back, though. And I, before we yes. go any further in today's uh, in today's uh, recording, <laughs> it is April the Fool's Day, April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day See, today as we are recording this. I can't, I don't even want to say it. Uh, and we want to make something very clear. Uh, following the lead of our publisher, Matt, uh, we we don't do April Fool's Day here. Uh, we No jokes. There are no hoaxes. Everything that we are going to talk about in the news today 
is actual news. Um, so uh, we, we don't fall for those uh, viral hoaxes. And uh, we urge you to maybe just put down the social media for the day, or at least don't start typing angry comments uh, about something that is obviously fake. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I like to have as much fun as the next person, probably too much fun. I just think it's lame. Sorry. Uh, we have a lot of good, really true news to get into yes. this week. So I am excited for yeah. that. So if you want, if you want April Fool's Day jokes, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have to go somewhere else. Well, it's very um, easy. You just go on socials and it's every. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't avoid it. Um, but here we are jumping into the real news in the queue. All right, we're going to start out at Tokyo Disneyland, uh, where Marvel characters are coming to the Tokyo Resort for the first time. And they're starting, believe it or not, at It's a Small World. If you were purists who thought the addition of Disney characters to It's a Small World uh, a decade or two ago was a blasphemy, uh, hold on to your hats. Because... Um, Baby Groot and a whole bunch of child style Marvel superheroes are going to be inserted uh, into the classic fantasy land attraction this uh, in winter of 2025 uh, yes. for what we think is going to be a limited time. Uh I, I'm trying to wrap my brain around this. Yeah, uh, this kind of uh, sounds like a April Fool's joke. I mean, honestly. It is, it is not. This, yes, I yeah. thought this at first. But no, this is actually for real. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, mean, I think the characters are adorable based on it, the artwork. Uh, I also want like a print of this. It's, the, it's a small world boat with all the little baby characters and a really cool, whimsical, almost like um, Joey... Chow, you know, the Disney artist. It's mm -hmm. got that very whimsical, colorful feel. Uh, I think it could be really cute, though. Um, it it has the potential to be mm -hmm. adorbs, for sure. Uh, it's all a matter of how they manage to uh, make this integrate and fit in with the classic Mary Blair style. Um, right. So uh, I actually, I'm, you know, maybe I'm in the minority. I think that uh, when they did it for, I believe it was first for Hong Kong, and then they put it into Disneyland California. I, I think that the Disney characters that they added to those It's a Small Worlds are fairly subtle and done consistent with the style of the original dolls. Um, but uh, so we'll have to see uh, if the same can be said of the Tokyo version. Here's what we do know. Um, the description from Disney reads like this, uh, Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy film trilogy and his friends from Marvel Studios films are visiting Earth for vacation. Groot encounters his friends in various locations on Earth and experiences their regional cultures and music with them, as well as with children from all over the world. Okay, um, the synergy is there. Groot has his little luggage that says, I love Earth. So uh, my first question is, uh, will this change all of the music in Small World from the children singing the song to just, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot, <laughs> oh, I am Groot? I mean, uh, I don't People who might consider that an improvement. You know what? The Tokyo audience loves adorable, cute things, as is evident with Duffy and Friends. So... Maybe they are banking on this to be kind of like a merch tie-in, and they're going to have all the little cute little groups, you know, mm -hmm. Ant-Man, Miss Marvel, just kind of little versions and make it a new character universe? I don't know. Um, well, and it actually, this will uh, kind of, as you say, a new character universe. It is uh, a mashup because not yeah. only do you have the classic Mary Blair dolls, but the Tokyo version already has the Disney characters integrated mm -hmm. into it. So uh, I don't know. This will probably be the first attraction that has Marvel characters alongside 
classic Disney characters alongside yeah. theme park original characters. And my yeah, the, this is definitely a multiverse uh, situation. That's the only explanation. Yes, yeah, so uh, a lot to wrap your head around. Uh, we'll be uh, we've got a little. <laughs> we do have a little time to wrap our brains around it because uh, the attraction is uh, is going to stay the current. It's a small world uh, until autumn of 2024. So you got most of the rest of this world uh, this year, and then it's a small world will shut down in autumn temporarily, uh, and then reopen in what they call winter 2025. So I'm hoping they mean early winter, uh, the beginning. You of know the what? Winter. Disney so seasons are like, never exactly. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it could be really any time for what we um, uh, and there is no, uh, you know, detail yet whether this is a going to be an annual overlay or uh, just a one-time thing, uh, or when the original will return. Um, but uh, from the concept art, we can guess at uh, who the characters are that will be included alongside Groot. Uh, obviously, his other friends from uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy will be along. Yep. Uh, Captain Marvel, Ant Man and the Wasp, Miss Marvel. Black Panther, uh, Hulk, Goose, um, Mighty Thor, Captain America, Doctor Strange, and the Sorcerer Supreme Wong. And uh, if you have wondered why this is the first time we're getting Marvel characters at Tokyo Disneyland, it's because the rights previously belonged to uh, Universal in Osaka. Yeah. They shut down their Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man ride in uh, January of 2024, which has opened the way for Disney to use the characters. Yes. Yeah, so much like in the States, we have our very own uh, Marvel versus Disney land fiasco. It is interesting mm -hmm. to learn about their very own version of it, too. Yes. Uh, we've got some links on our website, attractionsmagazine.com, in the story. Uh telling you all about uh, the details of that, along with some uh, adorable videos of Groot in the theme parks. Uh, and um, of course, uh, if you're visiting in interested in visiting Tokyo Disney Resort, uh, we recommend Mouse Fan Travel to help get there. Next up, it's time to meet the critters that are going to be coming to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. The uh, new replacements for Splash Mountain coming this year to Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Yes, uh, they're really dragging out these. Uh, the opening they, of this, so many announcements, it's overwhelming. They are, yes, uh, they are milking every possible detail of this new ride for all it's worth. Um, and this time uh, they've devoted uh, a detailed blog post to the critters that you can see in the concept art uh, who are going to be providing a uh, musical accompaniment for the ride. Honestly, I don't know if these are things, characters that we're going to see recurring throughout the ride, or if this is like one scene in the ride that they are just hyping up. Uh, we will have to find that out. Yeah, so it's very interesting. I don't know if it's the drag out, but they're like in the announcement, they're we're so excited. It's so, you know, not common to have new characters introduced. So again, I don't know if it's really going to be this big splash or yep. they're just dragon. A big splash, no pun intended. Well, uh, <laughs> so uh, the story is that Princess Tiana, uh, after the events of Princess and the Frog, she's getting ready to throw a big Mardi Gras party that uh, guests are going to be helping out with. But uh, there's a mix up and Tiana needs to find a band. So we have to go to the bayou uh, and find a bunch of musicians at the last minute. And these are the musicians that we find. Uh, we've got names and musical instruments uh, for the critter band uh, that is going to be featured in the ride. And uh, I don't know, should we, should we, let's go briefly through their names. <laughs> I'm, I mean, it is like, it's really detailed again, which makes me really want to know because we have so many attractions when there's little adorable creatures and we don't really know much about them. Maybe lore creates a name, but there's like each one has their very own unique personality. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So we start out with Bahalia the Beaver, uh, who's a uh, dam building percussionist. 
Gritty the Rabbit, who uh, plays washboard made out of a license plate. And Bo the Opossum, or I think if you're from New Orleans, you probably just call him Bo the Possum. Um, uh, and uh, they play um, the upright bass made out of a gourd, of course, as one does. Uh, Apollo the Raccoon plays Squeezebox. Rufus the Turtle uh, is on harmonica. And finally, Timoleon the Otter. Uh, the eldest member of the band um, plays the fiddle. I think we should make one of those personality tests where you take a quiz, right? Which and then see which, which uh, critter musician it. are you? Yeah, um, yeah so, I will go uh, first. Obviously... I'm Rufus because I'm always up for an adventure, and he right. seems really fun, and I love turtles. Uh, it's coming, yes, coming to your Facebook feed next. Uh, the critter. Uh, personality test um yes each each one has a more detailed description uh which you can find in the article on our website um and it is great to see disney creating uh brand new characters for the theme parks and not just uh recycling uh, or, uh previously existing ip um and there's a little video uh, that you can find on disney's social media uh, with Laura West, who is the concept designer from Imagineering, who uh, came up with these critter characters. Yes, uh, you're going to want to read all about it, so you're ready to go <laughs> whenever the attraction opens this summer. <laughs> yes, you're going to want to be hyped uh, so that you spend money on merchandise, such as these super cute uh, plushies that you're going to be able to take home of Bo, Apollo, and Rufus. I guess they just uh, picked three of the critters, uh, assuming that these will be the breakouts, uh, and they are uh, pretty cute. Yes, so. I agree. I think those will be the breakout stars, especially yeah. Rufus. <laughs> well, it's coming to Walt Disney World in the summer and Disneyland before the end of the year. Uh, stay tuned for more details as they are released. Uh, hopping from Disney over to Universal, uh, and we've got a construction update at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter that is coming to Epic Universe in 2025. And it looks like the Fantastic Beasts are on the loose, uh, or at least painted facsimiles of them, because uh, we've, they've taken down some scaffolding around the Parisian-style buildings, and we've started, spotted a griffin painted on the side of one. Yeah, this looks great from what we've seen. Uh, this is the land I think many of us are really hyped for. I'm not necessarily a Harry Potter person, but I love the immersive nature of the theme parks and the way they've just kind of nailed the Parisian atmosphere. And now seeing this, uh, I truly cannot wait. I, I am excited uh, as a big fan of Epcot's uh, Paris Pavilion, uh, which is a little too small. Uh, this looks like a supersized version of that. Uh, and I'm very excited to uh, be able to wander around there. I, I just hope that there is a sidewalk cafe where I can sit and uh, sip coffee for hours uh, oh. and watch watch people go by, preferably yes. in a romantic rain. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you do not remember Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, and I'll be honest, I watched that one once, and uh, if you held a gun to my head, I could not tell you many details about it. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, but this is a recreation of Place Caché, uh, as seen in that film. Um, but you know, from these photographs uh, of the area as they're taking it down, it really looks like you are not going to have to have seen the movie to appreciate uh, the scale of these streets, uh, the detail that's going into them. Um, and uh, we've got some great flyover photos, courtesy of BioReconstruct, uh, showing off uh, not just how the buildings are basically complete, but also they are paving the ground already. Wow. Uh, and we've talked so... a lot about the infrastructure because that's what takes the bulk of the mm -hmm. time regardless if the attractions are ready. And that is impressive to see. And honestly, uh, paving the sidewalks, uh, the pedestrian pathways is one of the last things you want to do because you need to get all the heavy equipment finished. You don't want to have a crane in, you know, have to roll in there and crack the pavement that you've just uh, 
just laid. So the fact that they are doing this uh, means they are really far along. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's lots of interior work to be done, but uh, the exterior construction is wrapping up at a pace that I would not have predicted. Uh, and like I said, we've got great aerial photos uh, of the whole project. Uh, along with links and videos uh, putting this into context with the rest of Epic Universe, which we'll be talking about a little bit more later in this Yay. episode. Excited. Um, now for something completely different. If you are a sweet tooth, uh, a, um, if you are a sweet tooth, rewind. If you have a sweet tooth uh, and uh, you are not on the East Coast able to visit uh, Hershey in Pennsylvania, a new Hershey experience is on its way to Chicago's water tower place that is going to transport Hershey chocolate enthusiasts into a magical world of candy making like never before. Yes, uh, I thought this was a really interesting announcement because there's really like nothing to it. They literally shared. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, I wish the announcement had a little bit more splash right. to kind of make motion because it sounds like it could really be cool, especially if it's anything like Hershey's Chocolate World in Times Square mm -hmm. or in Hershey Park, obviously. But the announcement really gives away nothing. I, yeah, we kind of in our article here had to use a bunch of pictures of Hershey in Pennsylvania uh, because we don't really have much of all in terms of details for this. What we do know is that uh, this new experience is coming from Original X Productions, uh, is, which is the group that does things like the Friends Experience, the Office Experience, and the Harry Potter Magic at Play Experiences. And these are all basically uh, what I call Instagram museums. Uh, they're kind of interactive walkthroughs, semi-interactive uh, walkthroughs that are focused on uh, recreating locations or creating uh backdrops that you can take photos in um, Interesting, yeah so uh you know the the there's a flagship uh of the friends experience in new york and this is going to kind of be the hershey's chocolate experience in chicago um and uh you know honestly we don't know exactly what it is i, I hope that it's more like obviously they i don't think they're going to have a dark ride like they have uh you know at the the hershey uh chocolate world in pennsylvania um uh, but you know maybe they'll have a make your own chocolate bar experience or some Reese's kind of uh, experience is really mm -hmm. fun easy to replicate uh but yeah they should give uh sally dark rides a call yeah that would that would be fantastic um uh so it does look like this is going to be a a semi-permanent experience. Uh, it's supposed to launch in late summer or early fall. Um, I don't know if there'll be a touring version, but uh, for now, you'll have to plan a visit to Chicago to check it out and let us know what exactly it is. Yes, and go to Three Dots and a Dash and have a tropical cocktail. Absolutely. <laughs> um, next up, something a little closer to your neck of the woods, Silver Dollar City. Uh, in Branson, Missouri, has just opened a brand new roller coaster that is a old classic roller coaster as well. Uh, the new version of Fire in the Hole is now open, and it's getting rave reviews from everyone I know has been on it. Yes, um, I haven't gone on it myself, but I've been following this entire thing as you know, seeing the construction site, and mm -hmm. they really, I mean, first off, it's amazing that a theme park has such a beloved attraction that is obviously was very old and said, hey, let's just make a brand new one with the technology and resources that we have today. And so from everyone that I've talked to, it holds that you know, integrity of the original attraction mm -hmm. while of course bringing it to the modern age. You know, We have a, a air conditioned facility, so it is temperature controlled, which it's crazy, yeah. the old building was not, so it got very hot. Uh, so uh, obviously updated. I was part of the special effects because yes. uh, it was fire themed, right? Yes. Uh, so, I, I mean, never got a chance. Cool. Yeah. I never got a chance to ride the original, uh, but I've watched a lot of videos, uh, POVs of the new one and the original one. And it really seems like they did a great job of recreating the, the scenes, the characters, the, the story that people liked before, but upping the ante, you know, making the special effects more modern. 
Um, but it's still, you know, it's not too slick. It's still got a little bit of a homemade feel to it, which which I like. Um, yes, anyway, that's uh, as City special. So as you mentioned, they have built a brand new five-story air-conditioned building uh, for the attraction, uh, over 32,000 square feet. Uh, and this is what they call their largest, biggest, uh, their biggest investment ever in a single attraction. Uh, it's uh, the, the ride's about three minutes long, and it looks like it is really more of a dark ride than a roller coaster. It does have uh, some, some drops, and it's got a splashdown finale. Uh, but the focus is really on the dark ride scenes, uh, 1880s themed, uh, to uh, the legend of the bald knobbers, which I understand is a true story from the region uh, about uh, people who tried to set fire to the town. It's like a vigilante uh, group. Yeah. yeah, it's a really fascinating story. But yes, it, it, it has uh, roots in history. Yeah. So it was probably something that was absolutely terrifying for the people who had to live through it. And now we've turned it into a theme park attraction. Uh, 51 year old uh, attraction uh, definitely has uh, stood the test of time. Uh, the original version closed down on December 30th of 2023. Uh, so they did a good job of getting this new one uh, up really quick and well like so it's said, in a totally different location yes so the, the yeah. building yeah is a brand new building they actually kind of expanded and converted one of the like fire department themed areas uh for the new ride so it's a brand mm -hmm. new show building and whatnot i'm curious how much of the original props uh you know or sets were recycled uh, not like much so basically it was just some uh pieces from like the queue like there was a oh, wow. poster that was uh, moved, um, but pretty much the show scenes, mm -hmm. with, like with the exception of some Easter eggs, are all brand new. Wow. Well, there's 14 of those show scenes, uh, and uh, they spent $30 million on this, which is a lot of money for a park like Silver Dollar City. Uh, it's got a uh, custom soundtrack, and uh, it's, a like I said, family-friendly, uh, more dark ride. It does hit 26 miles an hour, um, but uh, it's got a, a pretty decent capacity, too, because there's five ride vehicles uh, with 12 people per train. So uh, it would definitely be on my bucket list uh, if I finally get out there. for Yes, a, one of and I have days. to mention uh, they're famous. So Silver Dollar City has a lot of like really famous eats, but one of them is their soft pretzels, and they make this mm. like, pretzel-wrapped hot dog. And it was so popular, it was from this little stand. And now in the land where fire in the, hole, the new Fire in the Hole is, mm -hmm. is an entire pretzel restaurant. And yes. they bought the famous hot dog on a stick wrapped in a pretzel. And when I tell you, it is one of the best things ever. I saw that Matt, our publisher, got one, and I cannot wait to be reunited with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, they've, they've uh, surrounded this with an entire district uh, themed area. And uh, they've named that pretzel cafe after Sadie, who is the uh, wife yelling at her husband in his uh, red pajamas, uh, red Flanders, who's also got his own shop now with branded merchandise. Yes, they've done such a great job. Uh, I love this park. They really have, you know, kind of that forward thinking theming of, you know, like a Disney level park. Mm -hmm. And you just wouldn't expect it because you're in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. And it's just, it's something you really have to experience because it is one of the best parks I think I've ever been to. Well, if you want to experience yourself, MEI Travel can help you get there. And uh, now it is time before we jump into our main attraction, which I just spoiled if you were uh, watching the video. <laughs> Oops. Uh, it is time for us to hear a word from our sponsors. The Attractions Podcast is brought to you by MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Whether your next vacation is a magical trip to the theme parks, an exciting adventure to the pyramids of Egypt, or just a relaxing cruise on the turquoise waters of the Bahamas, MEI Travel provides premium service and expert advice to help you get the most of your vacation. They are always free of any hidden fees or costs to you. Visit them at mei-travel.com. It's time for the main attraction. 
Well, this week's main attraction, I said we were going to be talking more Epic Universe, and Universal dumped a huge pile of information about uh, the first intellectual property-themed land they've disclosed, How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, coming to their new theme park in 2025. And I got to say, I am not super familiar with this franchise beyond the first film, but seeing all the stuff that's going into this new land makes me want to start diving into the movies. Yes, I think your sentiment is felt widespread. Uh, so many of us have slept on it, myself included, admittedly. Yeah. So seeing this and the artist renderings and the videos that they put out on socials makes me super excited to kind of dive in because I yeah. definitely want to know what I'm going to be experiencing, especially if it looks as pun intended epic as it does. Yes. From what they're and, feeding us now. And this land is absolutely epic. You know, some of the other mm -hmm. uh, lands in uh, the new park are only going to have a couple of attractions, but this really looks to me like the most fleshed out land at epic with a range of the e-tickets down to those C tickets and those uh, kind of diversions. It's really got a wide breadth of things for the whole family to do. And I think that even if you aren't uh, super familiar with the How to Train Your Dragons franchise, just from the concept art, this just looks very colorful, visually appealing and kinetic. Uh, and it looks like the kind of area that you're going to want to just hang around and explore. Uh, or have some meeting, which we'll get yeah, to. Have some meeting. Yes, absolutely. We will get to that. Um, anyway, so here's the official description um, of How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. Uh, guests will take to the skies and soar with dragons as they explore the colorful Viking village at the heart of Burke, where they can take part in wild boat battles, feast like a Viking, and more. Uh, and yeah, so if you're unfamiliar, like I am, this is also helpful because it actually is taking place between How to Train Your Dragon 2, which came out in 2014, and then the 2019 How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. So it's not neither of which I have seen the first one. <laughs> yes. So we, yeah. we have our work cut out. Yes. But I I really do believe that uh, just like with, you know, Harry Potter um, or Super Nintendo, Universal designs these so that they are appealing enough and understandable enough that you don't have to have deep knowledge of the franchises to enjoy wandering around the space. Um, of course, uh, you'll get all the Easter eggs and the details that uh, someone like me will miss out on if you already know these uh, films. But uh, Ooh, there's but still you know, time. We've got, a, we, yeah. we've got a year to catch up, right? Yeah, exactly. And like from what we've seen at Universal Studios Beijing, which already has the franchise mm -hmm. integrated, I mean, I'm like speechless just at that videos and I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got to get ready. So uh, let's go on a rundown of the official information that's been released about the attractions that are going to be part of Isle of Burke. And the first one is Hiccup's Wing Gliders, uh, which is an Intamin launched roller coaster. Uh, and the theme of this is that uh, Hiccup has built a winged flying machine to help train us to ride a dragon. Um, and uh, but unfortunately it looks like uh toothless accidentally launches it before it's totally ready to go so instead of flying in the air we're just going to kind of skim along the water and uh, loop around the land uh, it hits speeds of 45 miles an hour um it's not an inversion heavy it's i would think of this as like velocicoaster junior um yes it's a similar it style but not nearly as intense Right, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a Big Bear Mountain from Dollywood yes. vibes. It's just like a beautiful mm -hmm. terrain coaster. And I love the fact that it's going around the majority of the land. And if you look at one of the videos a Universal Creative mm -hmm. posted, it kind of shows the path it takes. And it's really weaving throughout. So what a cool vantage point to explore the land from a roller coaster. Yeah. And I think the way it's, you know, dodging around rocks, going under bridges, you know, splashing through the water, it's going to feel a lot faster than it is because it's going to be close to things. Um, yeah, we've got uh, these great aerial photos, uh, courtesy again of Bio Reconstruct. Uh, and you can really see how this, uh, and even if you're not on the ride, it's going to really, you know, add kinetic energy to uh, the land wherever you are. 
Um, and I still love that they've got this helix here with these uh, sheep that I don't know if they're statues or animatronics. Yeah. <laughs> I'm eager yeah. to be the first person to do the sheep trick, uh, just like the dynamite goat trick on Big Thunder Mountain in Disney. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be a good one. Uh, but what I am most excited about is an adaptation of Universal Beijing's Untrainable show. So mm -hmm. you probably, if you're a theme park person, you've probably seen videos online because it has kind of a show-stopping scene. Uh, but we're getting a version called the Untrainable Dragon. Yes. Um, so it's uh, not going to be the exact same show that they have uh, in China, but it's going to have similar technology with these giant puppets they're a mix of puppets and animatronics um, and it's basically a life-size flying dragon that will fly out off over the stage over the heads of the audience um, mixed with uh, projection effects uh, giant video backdrops uh, music uh, dance basically creating a broadway quality show in the park and i think this is going to be you know the the big sleeper hit this is going to be the the one that people go home talking about saying you have to see the show absolutely um and then what i love is that it's not just the big you know the big e-ticket coaster and show but they've also got these kind of uh medium tier mm -hmm. family rides uh that are you know, closer to something that you might find in a regional park, but dressed up with universal level of theming. Uh, the first one is Fire Drill. Um, and it's, you know, it's interesting to me that we don't have one of these in an Orlando theme park, as far as I know, because this splash battle style of uh, interactive boat ride, very popular. We've got them in Legoland parks, um, got them in uh, other regional parks all around the country. But I think this is the first one in a major Orlando park. So uh, it's fun because there's no height requirement. Uh, as long as you can sit up on your own, you can ride. And uh, it basically think of like Toy Story Mania or uh, Buzz Lightyear, except with water cannons. Uh, yeah, these so are what, so fun. What could go wrong, right? Yeah. I've done the Legoland one. Dollywood used to have one like this too. And it's just, it's so fun, especially... Mm -hmm. It gets so hot in the summer. It's going to be so nice. It just kind of like cool yeah. off. And a lot of them, uh, they're basically going around a concrete ditch with minimal theming around them. But this, you're going to have all of these uh, kind of homemade, handmade looking um, targets. Uh, so you can practice putting out fires. Um, and it, it really looks like a lot of fun. Um, and then in addition to that, uh there's a ride that uh i'm pretty sure you're probably not going to go on and i'm going to no. probably do it once just to say i did i, I will uh, do it once but i heard also i was reading it because there's other versions of this and it's like a learning curve for mm. making it go your vehicle go right so i don't i don't know <laughs> yeah so dragon racers rally is uh it's what they call a flat ride a pair of them uh but there's not much that's flat about it uh, it's basically a pair of giant arms that have uh little gliders stuck on the end of them uh and they spin around uh going up to 67 feet in the air and each rider can kind of control their little glider vehicle and choose to try to fly level or flip upside down uh but yes it is definitely an acquired skill uh to uh, try to get your correct orientation especially without uh getting very motion sick oh uh, yeah uh, i will not so. be having me before going uh, on this, but i guess i will try that <laughs> that is a wise choice that is a wise wise choice uh <laughs> Or maybe so, yeah, just you, enough meat. <laughs> yeah, in theory, you can choose to make this uh, as wild or mild as you like. Uh, but I think even the mildest version, you're still soaring around, uh, you know, almost 70 feet in the air, uh, hitting some high speeds. So uh, this this does not look uh, for the, uh, you know, for the little ones. That's the little ones you're going to want to send to the Viking training camp. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold the purses and your personal yeah. belongings while you go on it. And yeah. I will be in the play area, which I think is awesome. You know, I love seeing these play areas in parks. It's a good place to just, you know, you think the rides are going to be what your kids want, but really they just want to run around. Yeah, if you've ever seen one at Epcot, it's always very popular and Universal needs more of these. So this is great. Every, every theme park needs at least one or two places where kids can just blow off steam in an unstructured way uh, without having to wait in a queue. 
and uh, Viking training camp looks like it's going to fit the bill for Epic Universe. Uh, the the climbing structures looked very very similar to what we're seeing going into the DreamWorks uh, kid zone that's uh, under construction right now in the studios, uh, with some towers and and uh, bridges to climb around. But it's also got a lot of uh, interactive areas, some slides, things to climb on, um, and uh, looks like it's got things for both little kids and slightly older kids, uh, including an agility course, a teeter-totter, and uh, and some more. Yeah, this looks uh, quite involved, you know, compared yeah. to a lot of other play areas. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, one thing that I think might uh, actually end up getting some of the longest lines is the haddock paddock meet and greet uh, because this is going to be your opportunity to meet hiccup and uh toothless and kind of recreate that iconic scene from the film uh they talk about this in the uh in the uh, universal creative video uh of putting your hand out uh and having uh toothless the dragon nuzzle you um, and getting that photo because uh, who doesn't want to be nuzzled by a dragon? Oh, I would love to. And um, I've seen some videos. We have one up. Uh, he did briefly meet at yes. Universal Hollywood. I think mm -hmm. it was like 2019, somewhere around there. Yes, um, but prototype. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the one that we get in the park is going to be even more uh, advanced and adorable than that one. Uh, in addition, there's going to be some walk around characters uh both vikings and dragons roaming around the area freely and something uh they've just teased uh but they've mentioned dragons flying through the air and uh the, it does look like there's work on some drone uh technology uh possibly to have dragon drones not unlike uh, disney once tried uh flying over the land so that would be pretty I mean, it wouldn't be a week of news without some drone mention yes we gotta have drones <laughs> so uh i know you are most eager to talk about the mead uh <laughs> mead hall is yes, the main yes. quick service <laughs> dining hall that uh they are going to have um which is topped by this uh, amazing force perspective mountain and this is where you can feast like a viking uh, on a savory menu of meat fish sandwiches and more of course you can also get mead and you know i did not realize this until just recently but uh they've already got mead at universal studios hollywood in the wizarding world of harry yep. potter out mm -hmm. there their three broomsticks uh serves mead uh so i wonder if we're going to get something similar coming here yes i mean and what i'm really excited about this is going to be kind of like the main dining hall of course there's other mm -hmm. dining locations here but the level of detail and theming inside is that level yeah. of like Harry Potter three rooms. Oh yeah, uh, even, so. maybe even beyond. I mean, looking at right. the scale of the size of these people versus the size of the chandelier and the tapestries, uh, this looks absolutely massive. Um, and uh, in addition, as you mentioned, to the Mead Hall, there's also going to be the Spitfire Grill. Uh, that's a, a quick, quick fire. Uh, sorry, quick service dining location where the um, meat is flame seared by an unseen dragon fry cook i'm assuming there's going to be some sound effects or maybe special effects implying that there's a dragon in the kitchen uh, yes it's giving me uh ronto roasters vibe yes, you know, yes. We see the droid <laughs> yeah um there's also hooligans grog and gruel um and of course it's not a theme park land without merchandise opportunities including viking traders how to treat your dragon sweet shop hiccups workshop and toothless's treasures uh if you can't wait for those shops to open they've already got isla burke merchandise available in universal's orlando uh orlando's official online store at shop.universalorlando.com Yes, I guess we're going to have to collect each of these land pendants because yeah. what a cool souvenir. Uh, yes, need it, want it, got it. Um, and uh, in addition, we've got some pictures of progress on the portal that is going to be your entryway into the land. Uh, each land has its own portal, and this one has an inscription that reads, We, my friends, have dragons. Uh, very literal, very straightforward to the yep. point. 
Um, so uh, got some, like I said, great bio reconstruct aerial photography that you can line up exactly with the concept art. Uh, amazing to see how close the finished product is coming to these uh, renderings. And uh, lots of videos um, and links to give you more detail. And speaking yeah, so, of more uh, detail, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if you are uh, if you are super anal uh, obsessive theme park fans like we are, and you like pouring over every inch of the concept art for little uh, hidden bits, uh, you uh, need to head over to our website and read this article by Blake Taylor called Isle of Burke Details You May Have Missed in Epic Universe Reveal, uh, because this really zooms in, and I mean zooms in, on uh, Ooh, some of the little yeah. hidden details. Great job, Blake, in digging up some of these. Uh, so this is, yeah, the kind of microscopic details that super fans are going to get excited about um we talk a little bit about those uh possible drones um and references in the concept art to those dragons uh both flying over the land and flying over the audience in the untrainable dragon show uh the version of toothless that they're going to have in the show is going to weigh over 1100 pounds and have a wingspan of 26 feet um so yeah, take that <laughs> Disneyland, take that uh, Disney's Fantasyland uh, dragon that only ever appeared once. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, he we, did a great job. I mean, he zooms in on like the merchandise collection, mm -hmm. uh, the chandelier in Mead Hall. I mean, there's yeah. just so many. It's like, where's Waldo to the um degree? We also, uh, Universal posted, like, Kenan Thompson is in. <laughs> that, that is my favorite little detail. So um, <laughs> we've, we've got a picture of, uh, you know, there are going to be dragons, both static ones and animated moving ones as part of the landscape all throughout the land. And uh, in the concept art for this one uh, ice-breathing dragon, right in the corner, uh, yes. <laughs> You're absolutely right. And Alicia Stella pointed <laughs> out uh, he uh, participated in a um, marketing campaign for Universal years ago. And they basically took this photo of him and his family and flipped it around and stuck it in. Too. Oh, I, it was that whoa the, campaign. Yeah. And they're making like yes. the whoa faces in this. Yes. <laughs> so I, I hope they do not um, think that he will, uh, people will do not think he will be appearing in the theme park every day. Or maybe he's now contractually obligated to just hang out in the land all day. <laughs> So yeah, yes, I mean, there's a lot uh, of detail. A lot of fun detail to zoom in on on these photos uh, that Blake has done uh, for us. And uh, I call that the Lord's work because I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Um, yeah, little bits of story details uh, that you can pick up on in the concept art for Hiccup's winged gliders. Um, as well as uh, a, a detail that uh, a lot of folks didn't pick up. There's actually a different host, a different character is in charge of each attraction. Uh, Wing Gliders uh, is Hiccup, uh, but Dragon Racers Rally uh, is themed after Snotlout, who is the worst dragon racer in the series. Um, Fish Legs, who's the resident dragon expert, uh, is in charge of the Viking training camp. And rough nut and tough nut reign over the fire drill boat battle. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, one uh, question that uh, Blake also pointed out: there's a little, uh, a little bit of inconsistency in some of the concept art uh, of Dragon Dragon Racers Rally. Uh, some of the artwork and uh, depicts a shingled roof uh that is angled and that people could not get up on but others uh depict a flat roof that looks like it might be an observation deck uh, my vote is not for an observation deck because i don't think universal wants people climbing up to any place they could fall off of but no, not that's my guess <laughs> yeah um so if you are a uh how to train your dragon fan and want to really dig into all of the details uh including a rundown of all of the numbers um uh, the acres the square feet 
the buckets, the barrels that are going into this project, head on over to attractionsmagazine.com and read this excellent article by Blake. Yes. Yeah, so now I got to know, regardless of what we think will come next, what do you wish we knew the details about next? What land of Epic Universe? Oh, um, well, I'm, I, you know, I'm all about the dark universe. I yeah. want, I want to unveil the monsters. Um, so that's what I am most excited about. Um, my gut says they might be saving Harry Potter for last, but who knows? Who knows? We will see. Uh, they're going to definitely be rolling these out on a, you know, I thought we would have one in March, which we didn't get. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thought we would have one for Mario in March, which we didn't get. Um, so we'll have to see when they reveal that. Uh, but I think that uh, by June or so, they're going to want to open up that preview center in CityWalk. And uh, so we'll have most of this uh, unveiled by this summer. That's my guess. Wow. I hope so. <laughs> yes. I hope so, too, because I have to write a book about it. Oh, <laughs> No big deal. Well, that just about brings us to the end of our main attraction. Before we wrap things up, we are going to hop back and take a look at some of your comments in the queues. And Michael Bingham is excited about meeting Toothless. He thinks How to Train Your Dragon is going to be amazing at Epic Universe. Uh, and like me, he hasn't seen the movie in a long time and needs to go back and watch it. Uh, also, um, his mom thanks us for the birthday wishes. So hope you had a great, great birthday. Yes, I hope uh, yes Clint is also pouring shame on us for not knowing <laughs> uh, our How to Train Your Dragon lore. I'm sorry. We will. I will catch up. I promise. Um, and El Chapman um, is chiming in to say that the boat battle ride in Legoland is excellent fun. Uh, his son loved it. I like that one. That was, uh, I think, in Lego Movie uh, Land, right? Lego Movie World. Yes. Um, yeah. So cute. I like that one, too. Um, and uh, Michael Bingham's also ready to hear about Super Nintendo World, too. So hopefully we'll have more news about Epic Universe and everything else coming to the theme park world soon. Before we go... We want to thank our sponsor, MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. And we want to remind you, please hit like and subscribe and give us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you happen to listen to us. Be sure to follow us at attractionsmagazine.com. Search for Attractions Magazine on your favorite social media accounts. And Carly. Uh, where can folks find you on socials? Yes, I am on Instagram at Adventures by Carly and on X at Carly Caramon. I am on socials at S. Kuberski and at The Unofficial Guides. And you can find copies of my books at TheUnofficialGuides.com. Until next week, we hope you folks stay safe, try something new, but most importantly, have fun. And we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye.